and welcome to Those Working Fangirls, where we talk all things nerdy book, TV, movie, pop culture, fandoms, and how they integrate into our adult lives. I'm Natasha. And I'm Christine. This is episode 25, and today we are going to talk about a really interesting idea that came to our attention through TikTok. Natasha sent me this TikTok about a young woman talking about the benefits of living near your friends and why we don't prioritize friendship when it comes to looking to where we're going to move and settle. And Mm -hmm. it was derived off of this really interesting article from The Atlantic called Live Closer to Your Friends. And there was also a sub stack that went along with it that was based off of the article written by Helen Peterson that also really expanded on the idea of why we don't live closer Mm. to our friends. But there's a study that shows that people are 25% happier if they live next to their friends in the neighborhood with their friends. And makes a lot of sense. (laughs) It does make a ton of sense. And we just don't prioritize friendship above like our partners and our careers that we don't put it on the Mm. same level but it does bring us so much joy and so much security in life to have our friends close by and we've got a really interesting discussion planned out to dig into that and share all of our thoughts on the matter but before that we're gonna jump into snap crackle pop culture news natasha what's happening this week well, the Met Gala was yesterday. As it's it's always the first Monday of every May, and the uh, the every year the Met Gala has a theme. Okay, and so um, my favorite year I think was Camp. Uh, this year they celebrated Carl Lagerfeld. Okay, so I was really excited about the, about the Met Gala. Like I always am. I love to see like all the fashion and all that. Um, I knew that there. <clears throat> like people had talked about how like Carl Lagerford um had was quite controversial. Um if you didn't know Carl Lagerford was um a designer and he's the one who kind of headed up um Chanel for years. Like he's the one who brought Chanel out of like the 50s and and into like modern times and like the 90s. Um so I was like, as I was like looking at all the fashion coming through, um, I saw my friend Heather post this uh, post from Jamila Jamil and she's from The Good Place. And she's like a really big activist for for diet, like against diet culture. And uh, I really, really enjoy her. Oh, okay. She plays the lead. Okay. Yeah. Um, And and there's, it's, it's, it's just kind of like, it's upsetting that they had this whole night in celebration and, and I have to, you know, you have to take into account like the fashion industry is um, in and of itself, like anti-fat, like it has been for years and years and years and years and years. Um, she shared this post back in October. I just want to get this all out here before like we talk about some of the looks and stuff that we liked. Um, but uh Carl Lagerford has like a long, 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 long history of, um, in her words, was indeed supremely talented, but used his platform in such a distinctly hateful way, mostly towards women. So repeatedly and up until the last years of his life, showing no remorse, offering no atonement, no apology, no help to groups he attacked. Um, and there was no explanation for his cruel outbursts. And a lot of those were directed at, um, <clears throat> women who were um, trigger warning, sexually assaulted, the Me Too movement, gay couples, people who wanted to adopt, all fat people, specifically fat women. Um, and some of his greatest harm was against Muslim refugees and the disgusting ways he spoke about people fleeing what their homes. The hell? So, yeah, so they had this whole night. <laughs> Why did they choose <laughs> him in 2023? Yeah, exactly. And no one said anything. Like the whole night they were like, "Oh, what what memories do you have?" He died, so that's why. Um 
<laughs> and he, he, he is a huge name in fashion, but everything was just disregarded for the sake of the art and not the man. And I'm like, why, why couldn't we have like celebrated Chanel or something and, and not That's like a lot just... of different things that he <laughs> was terrible about. It's not even just like one that they could brush under the rug. It's like 50 different things. Yeah. And there's, she has, um, so many receipts of like things he said like one of the things he said was no one wants to see curvy women this was in 2009 Ugh. um about the me too movement in 2018 if you don't want your pants pulled about don't become a model join a nunnery there'll always be a place for you in the covenant wow convent <laughs> yeah oh so this is from um a german women's magazine about how Brigitte announcing that it would only publish photographs of real women instead of mo- models. Lagerfeld said, you've got fat mothers with their bags of chips sitting in front of the television saying that thin models are ugly. The world of beautiful clothing is about dreams and illusions. So anyways, Oof. Oof. those are just some receipts. And I just want people to, to cause I, I didn't know the extent of some of his hateful things that he said. Um, and, uh, yeah, everyone was literally like, literally Lily Collins had like a whole cape that had Carl. It said Carl. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. I was like, who's Carl? I th- assumed he had designed her dress. Cause I didn't know much about what was going on with the theme, mm-hmm. but that is sad to know. Should we move on to looks? Yes. <laughs> Should we just talk about a couple of the looks? So who is your yes. favorite? I really loved um, Penelope Cruz. She was in a bride outfit. A bride outfit. So a big thing. So I see. I know a lot about this, even though like I didn't know the extent of like everything that he had said. But um, usually, like the Chanel Spring Show, they 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 end the show with like a a Chanel bride. And so I think Penelope Cruz was was paying homage to that. But she was in this gorgeous. Well, Dua Lipa was actually in a gown that ended the show in 1993. And um, I love that gown because I'm obsessed with that silhouette. Oh, sorry. Um, but those are two of my favorites. Yeah, I, I love really liked. Dress. I really liked. Um, I loved Ashley Graham. Ashley Graham is a plus size this model. This is my favorite. I can't see it. Can you bring it closer? Yeah, it's like Kendall get- Jenner, I think. Yeah. But it's like really, a really cool onesie with like the sleeves or the dress. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very, a lot of people were like either cosplaying Carl Lagerfeld or his cat because he has an obsession with his cats. Is that what Doja Cat was doing? Yes. And I. Um, hated that because it just screamed the hunger game it's just like it was, are we in the capital because that is was, literally what they do it, she was like definitely tigress <laughs> yes like she was tigress yes. and it was just hurting my mentality just it just felt too close <laughs> the hunger games um and her meowing interviews, I didn't find them funny. After, like, the first meow, I was, like, annoyed. Oh, I didn't even know this. Um, Nat said one guy had a purse that said Carl who and Viola Davis. Ooh, what happened? Where did, oh, Viola Davis Carl, wore pink. Pink because he hated pink. <laughs> um, I really liked also Anne Hathaway's outfit. It was yeah. so cool. You need to show it like right in front of your face because I can't. the The video is not going to be able to see it. Yeah. Um, and I really loved. Let's see. I don't even know who this is, but maybe she wore pink too because of Carl hating because pink. Because of hating, yeah. This is such a cool dress. Grace Grace Elizabeth. Her name is. But anyway, so your favorite look of the night was Penelope. Yeah, Penelope Cruz and uh, Ashley Graham. Ashley Graham is, yeah. So Chanel Chanel does not make plus size clothing, but she is in a full couture like gown. 
and it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna have to also, Google. I liked Sydney Sweeney. I liked her hair. <laughs> Her dress looked like kind of normal, so yeah. it, it didn't stick in my brain. I like the ones that have a touch of weirdness to them because it's the yes. Met Gala and that's the thing. And that's why I thought that Kendall Jenner's outfit had like the perfect amount of weirdness. Mm-hmm. I also really enjoyed seeing Robert Pattinson and Suki yes! Waterhouse and Kristen Stewart. Um, yeah, both of Rob's exes were there, <laughs> <laughs> but he and, and Suki were so cute. I was watching videos last night on TikTok and I had to text her I'm like, look at these videos of Suki and Rob together. They're like, they did like a little kiss and they're just laughing and they're so yeah. cute. They've been together for like four years. Yeah. Yeah. Amy, our friend Amy uh, Instagrammed a picture of Rob and his current <laughs> girlfriend and two exes like very soon after it went up. And yes. I was on my feed and got so excited. <laughs> she was like, I hope they're all sitting at the same table. <laughs> He's never shown up with anyone before. Like it's... or gone to like events and things. Yeah, he doesn't usually go, I feel like. Yeah. And they were adorable, so it was really cool to see them being a couple in love. (laughs) Her outfit wasn't, like, amazing, but it was okay. Oh, I also love Pedro Pascal and his little biker shorts. Shorts, I know. And his sexy little knee. (laughs) He was wearing this red long jacket cape thing with black biker shorts underneath it and high socks. It was, like, dad fashion. (sighs) I loved it. He Dad, hot. but make it fashion. I didn't think it was hot. I saw so many people saying hot, and I was like, that looks like a dad out with a long red jacket. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the his, daddy. To each his own. Um, I, I I think it was interesting. Um, like, two of, like, the main people that I love seeing on the carpet, um, Blake Lively and Zendaya, were not there mm-hmm. last night. Was it I, about Carl? I'm assuming I it was think now so. that I know that Carl was the theme. Yeah. I think so. All right. Let's move on to our next news real quick. I just want to talk about Kesha has a new EP, or is it called an EP when there are two singles on it? And it's called Fine Um, Line and Eat the Acid. And I really like it. I mean, I don't, it's not like a bop. It's more like a Lord feeling to it, you know? And it's like understated for Kesha almost. And she Hmm. is pissed off (laughs) in it. And she's got a lot to be pissed off about. She does. She does. And it, the vibe of the album is very, like, stripped down. Like, she doesn't have any makeup. Her hair is slicked back in one of these pictures, kind of like Taylor for reputation, like a very natural look. Mm. And I like both of the songs. It's called Fine Line and Eat the Acid. I haven't really listened to them enough to know all the words yet, but I've had it on the background. And it's just, like, it's dark and mad and understated it's like when you're pissed off but you're like whispering you know because you're so mad female rage Uh, yeah (laughs) (laughs) and the last bit of news we had this week is the ballad of songbirds and snakes trailer dropped i think natasha didn't watch it Mm -mm. right she's Mm -mm. also watched it but if you don't know the ballad and songbirds of snakes is a prequel of sorts to the Hunger Games. It's basically the story about how the games came to be what they are when we see Katniss in them. And President Snow is the lead character. He's about 16, 17. We've talked about it in our Hunger Games episode. It's a very dark story. And it, it ends. It's just pretty grim. The whole thing's pretty grim. So just go into it like that. We're at the 10th Hunger Games. And Snow is a horrible person. And he doesn't like at first you think that maybe he used to be a kind of human person but then you realize that he's terrible (laughs) i i just started reading it because everyone's been talking we talked about it on our um fangirl um hangout session with our teen pools bananas we did peeps and um 
I was like, okay, I need to, I need to read the book because I, I, I would like to go into the movie knowing, knowing. the story and, and yeah, reading it because I want to have that experience again, like I did with the Hunger Games. Yeah, it doesn't feel like that though, <laughs> and it's almost like yeah. you know how we discussed this in our Hunger Games episode, how we were kind of so young when we read it that we didn't realize how harrowing and terrible a lot of it was because it (laughs) hits so close to home and then when you watch the movies now you're like wow this is dark Mm -hmm. when we read that you know how dark it is you Mm. feel how dark it is you feel how relevant it is to leaders in our political climate today and it's very heavy feeling Mm. i i feel yeah <laughs> so anyway that's a ballad of song words and snakes personally the trailer i feel like wasn't cut beautifully i <laughs> i just think that it didn't tell a linear story and i think that's what we want from the first trailer of a book that a lot of people haven't read a lot of people don't know what it's about a lot of people are expecting it to be like a hunger Games story like katniss where we're watching this underdog take down the government and there's this like this excitement of rebellion and it's not like that at all it's like it's the capital coming to crush everyone that is what it is it's Uh, like the beginning of everything too yes it's kind of like 10 years in as i as i just started reading it i'm just like wow they have so much to go through before it actually all ends and it's kind of it's just sad because it's you know it's everything is just about to start yeah yep like there's going to be 65 more years of this before yep. anything happens before Kenneth. <sighs> all right on that happy note <laughs> We're going to move on to what right now, but beforehand, we want to take a second to thank all of you out there listening. We appreciate you so much. Your support means everything to us. We want to make sure you're following the podcast on your favorite podcast app for free so you don't miss an episode. That's a really easy way to support the show and Telling a friend about the podcast is a really easy way to support the show if you want to help us out. And leaving us a review on your favorite podcast app doesn't have to be anything fancy, but the reviews really help us out if you enjoy the show. And if you want to support us in a bigger way, we have a Patreon. We are a viewer-supported show. We couldn't do this without our patrons and without, obviously, all of you supporting us for free and listening. I mean... But patrons make a huge difference, and they mm-hmm. have we have a lot of fun perks over there. We have at the five dollar tier our team Jacob. You get the show ad free. We have our first ad today. <laughs> um, you get to join us for our live recordings, and the biggest part, the most fun, is our fangirl tea time, which is a thirty minute extra show. That's more personal. We go a little deeper into topics that might not be, you know, it might be feeling too personal for the live show. And we have that every single week. So if you join the five dollar tier you get to go back and listen to half an hour extra show on every single show thus far and that's 24 right now so lots of extra content Mm -hmm. and then we have our team edward tier where you get an extra show every month we did an ama just last week we was nothing we answered all of the questions all <laughs> a lot of more lot of personal deep stuff, stuff deep stuff over there um that's available right now at the ten dollar tier and then we have our team bowls bananas tier where you can fill out a form to be a guest on the show we bring on a listener as a special guest every month and we do fangirl bonding sessions like hangouts on zoom once a month it's super fun we just had ours for last month Again, we did a lot of stuff this past week for the pod. It was a fun time. A lot available on patreon.com slash those forking fangirls. And if you want to watch the visual version, we have it up every week on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash those forking fangirls. Hello to everyone up there. And it would really be helpful if you like the video and left us a comment. We love interacting and like talking with you guys about each episode because we do this without... (laughs) Without... like you have feedback. feedback yeah it's it's still weird when we post a show and it's like we get a couple comments womp, it's womp. Like, did it happen 
<laughs> um, uh, anyway, all right. Let's move on to what right now. So, Natasha, you haven't been reading this week, but I finished two Oh, wait. I have books. been reading. I just oh. t- talked about how I started the... Oh, yeah. The, the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. The you, Okay. You wrote nothing. <laughs> I know. Because well, I, I have been reading with my eyes. So, like, here and there. So, whatever. I just started a few things. All right. All right. I finished Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. It was so adorable. I loved it. And I finished Happy Plays by Emily Henry, which was also wonderful. It wasn't my favorite Emily Henry book, just because I feel like she didn't stick the landing as hard as she usually does. Mm. But the, and it's just like literally the last chapter. It's so, it's so sad how big of an effect the last chapter has on your opinion of a book, but the rest of it was fantastic. And it wasn't bad. It was just like she's really good at last chapters, you know? It's like if you have someone who does A-plus finales every time, you're just waiting for that A-plus finale. And if it doesn't hit the same A-plusness as the last book, you're like, oh, it wasn't the same. But it really tackled a topic that I feel like is so prevalent in your late 20s, early 30s, where you have these friends you made in your early 20s that you're so close to that are like family, but your lives really start to change as you move into your late 20s, early 30s. And it's so hard to get together. And so the bonds you have don't feel like it start to feel less important, even though like when you're together, it's everything. It's just like you start to prioritize other things. And I think it's really relevant to our topic today. Um, Because as hard as it is to like get your shit together and get in the same place, it's always worth it. And you like those bonds refresh so fast and you connect, reconnect and it's wonderful and you have the most amazing time with these people, but it's just harder and you have to work harder to make it happen. Um, yeah the the lead character has a lot of like the same internal struggles with her career that like my lead character has in again but better and it's kind of like if she stayed longer in the career (laughs) that's what I feel like um so that was interesting I kept being like oh my god just like Shane um and um her so it's about a woman who goes on this trip with her friends every year on vacation in Maine because one of her mm. friends' father has this nice house in Maine on the water. And it's like this little town with all these little fun things to do, you know, on vacation. And this year, this past year, two of these friends, and she's two, like there's two f- twosomes, like two couples in this friend group have developed over the years. And our lead character is engaged to this man win and they are both in this friend group and they've been together for eight years and they broke up five months ago that they haven't told anyone because they're afraid it's going to break up the friend group and they don't want to upset anyone and so they uh, both come to this vacation and they like pretend they haven't broken up (laughs) but through that they start to find their way back to each other Oh, okay. I was like, it, is there another character going to come in? No. So it's really, it's really sweet. We, it's told kind of like people we made on vacation where we're seeing like them now, but also we're seeing how the relationship started. Like it flips back Got and it. forth. Yeah. Oh, okay. it's, it's really nice. Um, anyway, really great. Yours truly is about, I, I just told everything about happy place and nothing about yours truly, but yours truly is wonderful. And if you haven't read part of your world by Abby Jimenez, I would recommend reading that first because the main character is the best friend of the main character from part of your world. So you kind of get spoiled a little bit for how that story ends. And mm. part of your world is phenomenal. So excellent. So read that first, then pick up yours truly. She's a doctor in the emergency room and she has recently been divorced and gone through like a traumatic cheating situation. And um, it's been like a year since they've been, I think, separated. And her divorce is about to be made final and she's like in a pretty shitty space. And there's this new doctor, Jacob. With social anxiety and like he's he's having a hard time because of his social anxiety like making friends in this hospital. He's coming off like really cold and distant because he's just like 
withdrawing into himself and feels like he's saying all the wrong things because he's so anxious. And she's like, I fucking hate this new doctor. <laughs> Um, and oh, like no. he feels so bad because he keeps just saying the wrong thing and making her <laughs> hate him and so he writes her this like apology <clears throat> letter kind of explaining what's going on and how he's like just he's so sorry his social anxiety and he just keeps saying the wrong thing and doing the wrong thing and like it's it's just he's having a hard time and so they start writing letters to each other and like pinning them on their lockers and it's really cute oh it feels like a Grey's Anatomy type of thing. <laughs> I've never seen Grey's Anatomy, but it's adorable. It's really, really wonderful. So highly recommend. <clears throat> All right. Early, early Grey's Anatomy. Okay. TV shows. TV. What you watch? I watched the first episodes of two two new shows. Um, so Citadel is a new show, which I didn't know this, but Christine told me because she listened to Priyanka Chopra on Armchair Expert about... So Citadel is like this new spy show by the Russo brothers, and they have different um, shows with different actors all like in different countries. And like each of those countries... Or each of those shows, countries have, like, like Priyanka's going to be in, like, a, a different, like, country show. And then they all kind of, like, mix together as yeah. we see different so, stories. Like, the show centers around this, like, association that includes representatives from every country around yeah. the globe. And so there's the lead characters in this American version. But all the characters you see in it appear as, like, the main characters in their countries version of the show in their main language so amazon's releasing all of these and it's kind of like an experiment to see like how many people will like go watch all the other shows because they're all different content all happening simultaneously and the characters all cross over into the other shows which is really interesting yeah and so far <clears throat> the first episode it is the best thing, okay? I'm going to tell you that right now. Like, I, it hasn't been able to, like, keep my my attention because um, I, ha- I I got the episode one in, like, two days. And then I, I like, watched episode two and, like, watched the half, half of it so far. Um, so I'm hoping it gets a little better. I do love spy shows and I love Priyanka and I love um, Richard Madsen. He's hot. Um so I'm I'm hoping it gets a little better. And then I went to the premiere of Queen Charlotte, which by the time this episode airs, the season will be out. But it is the a spinoff of Bridgerton, and so freaking good. Like the first episode, I just I just know it's gonna make me cry because like we already know how the relationship ends as we see it on Bridgerton because Mad King George is Mad King George, and but we're gonna see it's not gonna. It's, how they started the show it's like this is not a history lesson like they're just kind of riffing off and creating a love story for like audience members to enjoy and so i'm excited to see how it all goes down and that goes live this weekend nice uh i watched all of season five so far that's been released at marvelous mrs Maisel this week it was really great and i can't wait for more episodes if you haven't checked out The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel on Amazon oh, yeah. Prime, it is Amy Sherman Palladino's show, most recent show. She did Gilmore Girls, and it's just beautifully shot, beautifully set decorated, beautifully. It's so funny. It's so well written, beautifully it's acted. So All the actors are so good. Highly recommended. <laughs> mm-hmm. What about movies? What'd you watch? Uh, Apple's new Ghosted with Chris Evans and Arna, on, on your Anya Armas. And it wasn't great. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, there, I love, I love the new genre of like action rom-coms. Um, they, they, it, it seems like they spent a lot of money on Chris and Anna and then not a lot oh. of money anywhere else. <laughs> Sad and times. like these two have done two movies together already and they're definitely cute together but i also like didn't i didn't um i didn't believe it like i didn't I, I couldn't believe that they were like a couple like the way that they were kissing was honestly awkward <laughs> oh no yeah i didn't i didn't really like it and the 
the plot was silly it like it's supposed to be you know um and the last scene <sighs> it was really bad cgi like, oh, really no. bad I think it's fun if you like if you want like a fun rom com. It's not a great one, okay. But like if you want to sit and like waste two hours of your life watching like pretty people on television, go ahead, watch it. But honestly, four out of ten. Oh god! <laughs> and then I did. I I watched the movie The People We Hate at the oh, Wedding, I and that was that. amazing. So yeah, good. So I know. Funny. You watched that like around In Christmas. Christmas time. Yeah. It's just amazing what a good script yeah. can do. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It was very funny. Um, I just, I really, I really want to know how Chris Evans and Anna read the script for Ghost and they're like, yeah, let's make this movie. <laughs> I wonder if they were contracted to do another film together. I don't know. It was through Apple. I don't think so. Apple could have bought something. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. but yeah interesting okay i also watched i couldn't even get through it but i was looking for a rom-com to watch and i've already watched everything it feels like and i saw one true loves on amazon prime now i read this book by taylor jenkins reed back last year and really really enjoyed it and I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even hear about this movie. I know why I didn't hear about it. No one was talking about it because it's very bad. <laughs> and uh, Taylor had, like, one post about it. Because I was like, has she even posted about it? I saw one post on her Instagram about it. She's like, this is the little movie that could. I can't believe it got made. The thing is, okay, Philippa So from Hamilton was in it. She plays Eliza in the original cast of Hamilton. <clears throat> and Simu Liu from shang chi and the seven rings is one of the love interests and so i was like oh my gosh i'm so excited i love these people and oh the movie hurts it's like it's written in the cheesiest possible way that you could write this script and yeah it's edited horribly there's so many fades to black and it's shot very poorly and everything feels very staged and one of the actors the actors that plays her sister i just she's not good at acting at all and every time she said something it sounded like forced and cheesy like they just brought someone in off the street to play her sister and philip was so is so good and then her sister that's saying like, things like that's like the same thing with ghosted it's like who really the, yes Aww. who are all these extra actors <laughs> i was just like i can't you can't put this woman next to philip so I just, like, I was laughing when she talked, and it was a very upsetting scene. <laughs> so I couldn't watch it. I think I got, like, half an hour in, and I paid five ninety nine for this because I love that book. So I was like, I really want to see it, and then I couldn't get through it. Oy. Anyway, so don't recommend watching One True Loves unless you want to pay five ninety nine for a very bad Hallmark film. I It's just not, it's really, it hurt. Um it hurts when you really like the source material also and they're doing it like very cheesily cheesily so it looks like very it looks like the book isn't good even though the book is great (sighs) anyway all right we're gonna move on to our main discussion but before that we have a word from our sponsors (laughs) Forking Fangirls is supported by Mantis Sleep. Sleep is so dang important and it just seems to get harder as we get further into adulthood. Before we started to Mantis Sleep, before we started talking to Mantis Sleep, I actually had never thought about the benefits that come with using a sleeping mask, but it really helps to provide a deeper, more restful, uninterrupted sleep because there's no light interruption especially i mean for me at least that that's really helpful and studies have shown that shown that sleep masks can improve cognitive learning and alertness which is very cool yeah so mantis sleep they are all about the pro nap movement and nap is more effective than a cup of coffee for your health and for your energy levels and what makes it easier to nap than a portable comfortable blackout curtain christine's gonna wear it right now (laughs) 
<laughs> Complete with razor thin Bluetooth headphones. Mantis Sleep makes the world's best sleep mask. They provide 100% blackout for a deeper sleep, and they're infinitely adjustable for a personalized fit. They are made of soft, breathable materials with zero pressure on your eyelids and lashes. Yeah, Natasha and I recently went on a trip to the UK, and we both really could have used these when we were there because we were staying in a lot of these hotels that were small, little indie places with windows where the sun shines in. And we, I would try to pop in my AirPods to go to sleep, but the beautiful thing about Manta Sleep's sound sleep mask is that it has built-in sound and bluetooth and it's very thin and obviously like fits around your head and when you use those airpods in your ears when you're sleeping like you lose them they fall out they're uncomfortable it's just not a great way to fall asleep to your sounds (laughs) but this mask is specifically made to prevent all those issues and make sleeping with your sleep sounds easy Mm -hmm. and even in a situation when you're you know especially in a situation when you're around other people and you're sleeping and the mask has a 20 20 hour battery life there's tabs for easy speaker adjustment and there's no out of audible battery noises so that when like it's going dead it doesn't jolt you awake with it's like beep <laughs> wake you up in the middle of the night it doesn't do that <clears throat> yep that's I, that's amazing because I actually never really thought about how you could integrate speakers into a, a sleep mask before. And when I have family over and or I have uh, or I'm like house sitting because I do a lot of both. Um, so I'm usually dealing with a lot of like screaming children in, in the early mornings or hyperactive cats <laughs> who are like <laughs> climbing on curtains. This happened before. Um, I had to block that out for like a restful sleep and like the mask is like uh, so perfect for that and it lasts me about three to four days on one charge and it's been just like so nice popping it on when um I have so many interruptions in the house um or I'm sleeping in someone else's room and those like annoying like slivers of sunlight or outdoor noises um are just like so annoying when like you're trying to have a good sleep and I usually play like rain sounds like real loud um (laughs) um, or or, like my deep sleep playlist yeah this is a luxury sleep mask it's infinitely adjustable which is great for people with small heads like me (laughs) like narrow heads like you can keep adjusting it and I love that it comes in this nifty little travel bag so that it stays safe and clean uh when I'm traveling and you can toss that in your bag or your backpack and so it's not loose and yeah if you're looking to improve your sleep quality and daily naps visit mantis the mantis sleep website using the link in our show notes and you can use our discount code fangirl for 10 percent off your order yay yay <laughs> Who remembers this song? <laughs> <laughs> All right. On to our main discussion. T- living near your friends. So a study has found that friends living within a mile of each other are 25% more likely to feel happy. And I 100,000% believe that. Like mm. it makes such a big difference of being able to walk to your friend's house to do things off the cuff to you know come over for dinner like let's do this let's go for a walk let's like can you help me out with this do you want to watch a movie like all those doors open up when you can just walk to your friend's house now So the article, the Atlantic article, this is a quote from them. Having supportive friends is associated with greater day-to-day happiness and longer lifespans, sometimes even more so than having strong familial or spousal relationships. It's also linked to lower levels of depression and mental decline as we age. And friends are particularly important at a time when 36% of Americans report feeling serious loneliness. Now, I feel like... I mean, the serious loneliness is due to the fact that we can, like, as humans, 
Mm-hmm. We were kind of we're meant to live in communal settings like yep. and that's how we've been for so long but technology uh, technological advances have allowed us to like live by ourselves because we can get groceries orders because we like can hire people to come fix stuff like we don't mm-hmm. need to be in a big community setting like we did like hundreds of years ago but mm-hmm. then we get depressed because like we're made to be social yeah. and because there's, I mean, we have a TV now that tells us stories. And back yeah. in those days, like, you would hear from, you know, someone older in the community telling you stories. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, even, like, when our parents were kids, they would just, like, go out and, and play yeah. with their friends. And now there's, you know, iPad iPads. kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, ultimately, I feel like that is really leading us to have more anxiety which Mm -hmm. we definitely do. I feel like social anxiety especially Mm -hmm. and higher levels of depression. And yeah, we, we all, I mean, a lot of us watched friends growing up and I, that was like the dream to live across the hall from your friends Mm -hmm. and just be able to like walk in all the time. It's magical. So. I didn't grow up on Friends, but I did grow up on Will and Grace. Oh, yeah, and yeah. it's like the same sort of situation where like the like two friends live together in an apartment and then there's a friend across the way. And then like, yeah, it's uh, like that, that, that was the dream. And I think um, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Never mind. Go on. All right. <laughs> okay. So I wanted to ask if there was a time in your life where you lived like in the com- community like, near your friends and it was magical for you. I think that would be the only time I was like in high school um, because I didn't grow up. Go- I didn't go to college. And so I didn't really, you know, experience that. And I think even if people did go to college, sometimes they didn't live in the dorms or like really experience that. And I remember my mom talking about that and how much like she loved it. And I never got to experience it that way. Um, but, uh, I, I, it wasn't like really until everyone moved away, like for college that I realized how lonely I was. Um, because we all used to like drive around and have fun and go to church and like go to the beach. And, and then there was always someone to hang out with. And because Alex and I are twins, we all had like, we both had like the same friend group. And so whether like one of his friends was available or one of my friends was available, like we would all just go and hang out together. And we kind of lost that when everyone graduated. Um, but yeah, what about you? Yeah, I mean, so when I moved back to my mom's after graduating college, I felt the same way. I was just felt stranded on this island where I was Mm -hmm. the only person my age and there was nothing to do, no one to do anything with. Mm -hmm. But uh, in college, so I've had so many roommates over the years and a lot of them weren't great. Like, and it wasn't, a lot of them weren't terrible, but none, a lot of them weren't magical, you know? And then my senior year of college, I had this magical semester where I met all of my best college friends. So I had met my friend Allison and study abroad and her Mm -hmm. close friend was Katie, my best friend, Katie, Dr. Katie. Um, (laughs) And uh, we were all going to room together, the three of us, but we were going to have a fourth person because it was like it was an apartment where there were four single rooms and a kitchen and a shared living space. And so we were like, oh, we're going to get a random. And then the random is Julia, my (laughs) other bestie. (laughs) And it was a perfect blend of humans. And I just was so happy all the time. Like Mm. I just – always had someone to talk to and get excited about things about we played cards every night we had a chart on the wall where we would like chart who was winning in our like long-term card tournament and it was like we would go out together we would go grocery shopping together like it was so much fun and forever like I look back on that time with just like giddy feelings because 
like uh, Katie and I would take our breaks together and like watch Parks and Rec together. Like we'd watch like the most recent episode of our shows together. We'd all sit together to watch Doctor Who, the Matt Smith ones, and like we'd make tea and like gather around on the couch. It was so so beautiful. And like after as we were graduating, um, I remember like you know Katie knew that me and Julia both wanted to move out to LA and she's like Mm -hmm. I really want to move out there too because you guys are like my family and like Mm -hmm. I wanted to be near you so and like I knew that her career would probably have to like take her and this is the thing your career some careers have very specific places you have to go to for the job and I knew hers would probably be like that I'm really thankful that she's four hours away so we could drive to her (laughs) like not on the other coast yeah but uh but like even so Julia's in LA, but LA is so big. It's not the same yeah. as being like a neighbor. Like it really has to be within walking distance to feel this like specialness, you know, where like mm. you can do things and just like lean on each other for support in any way that you need it. Um, so I was, so I recently, like also the opportunity like the the place you have to be in a place where you're going to move to like make this shift in your life, right? Mm-hmm. And I was in a place where I had to move after my last relationship because we were living together. So like I seriously was considering. I was like looking at places down near Natasha and I was looking online at places near Katie and I was trying to find a place in budget and nothing was in LA yeah. at all. Um and then in uh i got so excited because like there was literally a place next like apartment complex and right next to me i was like oh my gosh is christine actually gonna live near me all the places also would go like this so i couldn't get there the day of it was gone it was a Um, weird time for like renting yes yes it was so stressful. So I went out to Nevada because those places were like much slower going and I can get out an entire house for the price of a two bedroom apartment rental. Mm -hmm. Like it was insanity. But, um, I went out there and I just really didn't like the area. Like I just didn't want to live in a place where it was 110 degrees and I'd have Mm -hmm. to walk my dog for every day, like, and worry about his health. Um, And, like, a lot of other things come into your consideration because I know that, like, Katie and her husband's jobs might fluctuate and bring them to other states. And, like, I want to, you know, not, like, go there and then then lose them and be completely alone again. Because, yeah, out in California now, I have, like, multiple people that I know in the area. So that's really nice to know. But it's not the same as, like, you know, living next door to a friend. And I'll get, I have more stuff to, on that, I think, as we move on. But also, like, you know, there's the whole thing of also when you live in an area as an adult for more than a few years, like, you also, like, get your doctors, uh, yeah. like, in the area. And you get, like, your little places you go to. So it becomes harder to get up and move to a completely new area. You have to, like, really make sure, I feel like, if you're going to do this, like, move near your friends. Like, everyone's on the same page that, like, they want to be in that area. They're not going to be, like, the next year, like, oh, I'm moving by. <laughs> <laughs> And because we're not like programmed to so like to prioritize like our friends, I, and if they're not on that same page, like prioritize living near your friends. I feel like you could li- move to be near your friends, and then like they could move away. <laughs> that's like I don't know. That's my anxiety. <laughs> um, I do have to say I don't know if people know all the like everything about my living situation. Uh, Christine made a big move. She moved from Jersey to L.A. Well, well, J- you were Jersey. Boston, Jersey, LA. And Mm -hmm. I have always lived in California. I am born and raised Orange County girl living in an extraordinary world, quoting Gwen Stefani. (laughs) And, (laughs) um, uh, and I, my brother, my twin brother and I, Alex live with my mom, um, for the first 26 years of our lives. And, it wasn't until we both had jobs um, in like corporate America that we could move out. So we ended up moving in the same county 
um, we just moved closer to the ocean um, where like my I we actually live closer to my aunt and 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 her boys and we and we live closer to like people that we met at work but now we both don't work at the same place um like we both work at home now and um i think i i right now i've never experienced experienced this before but i am somewhat in that like magical time where i do have people close to me but i don't have like my closest closest friends like I've managed to make new friends and people are always stopping by and I'm always having people over watching things and it's really fun I've never really experienced this before and I I absolutely adore it so I'm I'm in a good place yeah. where I, I'm where I am but yeah. I just don't have Christine or like Heather near me <laughs> Yeah. I mean, luckily, again, I'm really thankful that, like, we're in driving distance of each other. So, like, if, yeah. um, like, I need to do it, I could get in a car and get down to you within an hour and a half and vice versa. Yes. Um, And that's, like, it's, it's not, it's not obviously ideal to, like, pop for popping over. But it's, no. like, <laughs> it's not too hard that it's, like, okay, let's, like, schedule these things months ahead of time because it's, like, a whole trip. It's not like that. No. <laughs> um. All right. So one of the scariest parts. Yeah. So like uh, this is kind of it uh, goes along with everything. But like one of the scariest parts of living alone across the country from like blood relatives is not having like the classic person that you would turn to in case of an emergency. Like I I still will put down my mom, even though like my mom's across the country. <laughs> like, and then I'll be like, wait, um, I don't know if I should be doing that all the time. Um, and like, I, yeah, I can't put down, I, I, there's no blood relative out here that I put down. So, um, and like a plus to obviously living right near your friends is that like you have an emergency contact within walking distance, like a friend in the neighborhood could, could drive you to the hospital in case of an emergency, like you don't have to get an ambulance. They can come over when you are like feeling really sad they they can help you out when you're sick like by just like with groceries and stuff and part of why I really love where I live now is that like I've made some like friends in the neighborhood and it's made such a difference to have even like to have even like a, a, any any people that I know within walking distance, but let alone like friends and like a network of people that I know I can depend on. And it's not the same as having like your best friend. Cause I'm obviously not as comfortable asking for help in different situations with people that mm -hmm. I haven't known and trusted for very long, but like I have two closer friends and in the neighborhood and it's made all the difference. Like we walk our dogs together. Like one of my friends got COVID and she like couldn't get out of the house to get her medication. So I was able to go to CVS and pick it up and drop it out, drop it off outside her door. And like when I was sick, they both like dropped some like, like a smoothie outside my door and Aww. like, like a little like food one time. And it's just like, it's so nice to have friends that are like right here like when I needed to film a TikTok I asked Cynthia <laughs> to film it for me and like she ran around with me at the park like across the street um filming that for me it's the one the ceilings one where she had to like run <laughs> as I ran um so like it's just nice to have people there and like when I couldn't when my shower head was broken, like I was walking with one of my neighbors and she was like, oh, it's really easy to change that. And she just was like, you know, gave me the confidence. She's like, I can do it for you. I can come over. And I was like, oh, if you can do it, I should be able to do it. Like, <laughs> so <laughs> then that's why I like changed my shower head by myself because she like told me what to do and I was easily able to do it. And Cynthia recently was like, oh, can I put you down for an emergency contact for this thing? Like it, it's so nice. <laughs> And it makes a huge difference to like when I first moved here and I, I was here for like two months when I threw my keys into the dumpster and I yeah. didn't know <laughs> what to do. I was like, I am fucked. I I was outside with Bellamy and we were trapped outside and I was just like trying to get it out of the dumpster with everything I could find around the area. I have a whole video about it. I'll link it in the description. But I ended up calling my ex-boyfriend because like I trusted him and knew 
that he would be able to like, I knew he'd pick up the phone. I knew he'd come out to help me. And I would do the same for him because like, he also doesn't have family right in the area. So like, it's, it's, that's the thing also, like having a partner makes a lot of a difference in these situations. Yeah. But I was going like, to say like, yourself. you are <laughs> single and a lot of like yeah. what you're talking about, I don't experience because I'm, I am single, but I do have, I live with my twin brother and it's always going to be Alex and Natasha for a very long time. I don't know if we're ever not going to live together. Um, (laughs) But um, yeah, like having a partner does make all the difference. But I think that like goes back to the beginning of the article. It's like we prioritize our partners and our careers, but it's like, I love my friends. Like, like they're like some of the most the are like one of like the most important like people in my life because um like not everyone's family is going to be there for them all the time and like your friends are your chosen family yeah and your friends have i mean not always obviously some people have a great relationship with everyone in their family but a lot of times your friends understand you better yeah. And know you in a more intimate way than your family members um, in a lot of situations. And whereas, like, sometimes if it's depending on what you need emotional support for, you know, your family might not be, might say all the wrong things sometimes. And yeah, or they friends... don't have the same political <laughs> views. <laughs> Yes, there's that. There's other just situations where it's just like generational, like understanding is different, you know, Mm -hmm. and processing and all of that. Yes, everything like that. And your friends are like there on your team and your friends are at least like I think our friends like I the friends I make are like long term if they're one of my best friends and you never know what's going to happen with a partner so you could move with a partner and end up breaking up and like your friends you're not going to break up with your friends <laughs> like they I'm going to be there for them and they're going to be there for me and it's it's a whole thing like I I I have obviously like I've been at that point in I, what I was talking about in happy place where it's like harder to make plans with your friends and harder to um, keep up because you have to be proactive about mm-hmm. keeping long distance friends. Um, yeah. And I am the proactive one. Like a lot of my, I depending on the friendship, but like, like for example, Julia, she's so busy all the time that like, if I wasn't being like, Hey, Julia, let's schedule this. Let's schedule this. <laughs> like, I don't know when I would see her, but yeah. it's always wonderful when we see each other. So it's worth it to mm-hmm. keep up being the scheduler. Like, and I, there's a couple other friends that I feel like I do the same thing for. And it's, it's harder if you live further away because I can be like, Julia, let's go get dinner. Julia, you want to come over? But like with someone who lives across the country, it's like, okay, when can we talk on the phone? Yeah. When can we like, and, and not everyone's good on the phone. So if they're not good on the phone, it's like, <laughs> okay, when can we schedule like a zoom hang or something? <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, I experienced this with Sasha cause she's in a frick another country <laughs> she's mm-hmm. in the uk and um but i i find it so interesting because i have been single for my entire life except for like one boyfriend that i wasn't really into and <laughs> i um i i always find it so interesting when my like best friends have partners or like they're just starting out in relationships and i kind of like lose them for a bit and it's like so sad because i'm not getting as many calls i'm not getting as like like as you know there's not as many people like or you know i would probably just say like you and sasha because you guys have really only been the people who have started new relationships since I've known you. A lot of my friends have been in relationships for years and it's like, we're back to like pre relationship because they're with their partner all the time. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's like when, like when Christine and, and John were together, like we, like especially when you guys moved in well when you moved in it was a pandemic and like everything (laughs) like changed so that was that was not fun for me (laughs) that was especially hard well and i was working too so like our both of our lives changed so drastically and it was weird now we're back to 
pre boyfriend pre work yeah. <laughs> it's really tricky when you're entering a new relationship because you it by the nature of it you get caught up in it and you have to give it's since it's so new and delicate like there's this need to foster it all the time mm -hmm. and it's really hard to balance um like everything else you just get caught up in it and especially if it's your first relationship i feel like if you're really into them i feel i've and it's really difficult um and then there is the aspect of like just being a human you want to share your days with people and like that person's right there yeah. and so they fulfill the need so you're not calling as many friends all the time and those relationships i think do suffer because if you're the person who's calling like and you're not calling and like they like they're used to it it's just like a weird sort of you have to figure out what the new way mm -hmm. to stay in touch is and like your new rhythm and it takes time and especially i feel like with with john when we moved in together the pandemic and your schedule it was just like yeah both of us were all over the place like you were working during the day and i was like able to call on like specific chunks of time when I wasn't yeah. in the apartment like that's another thing like you're locked in the apartment with someone and during that time and you don't want to like necessarily especially in my situation where I really wanted to vent about my situation <laughs> like I can't it call wasn't when I'm in the apartment I, it was like I now have relationships with you know like a, a lot of my married friends and I'm just on speaker with like her and her partner and he might not even be listening but like we're just talking about random nonsense stuff or i'm friends with both of them and it's like we're all having a conversation together and like that's unfortunately not what christine had <laughs> <laughs> when we went through like our like not like like we communicate christine and i communicated a, a lot like we still texted and all that but it was mm -hmm. not like it is before or now yeah yeah um i think that right, moves us into the next part yes exactly okay <laughs> so in so this is an excerpt from the atlantic making new friends in adulthood is notoriously tricky 22 percent of americans say that they haven't made a new friend in the past five years a friendly community has the potential to naturally expand and create a more social living situation for all which is so true it is so hard to make new friends when you move as an adult unless you have a dog <laughs> i feel like having a dog has been key to me making all the friendships i've made in this neighborhood like if i didn't have a dog i would be a loner like that's part of the reason i feel like i wanted to get a dog in the first place because i wanted to get out of the house because mm. i am naturally like in prone to hermithood like i have a really hard time reaching out making new friends and it was like i had to make friends because bellamy would like talk to these different dogs and i'm in a neighborhood with a lot bark, of friendly bark, 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 friendly bark, bark, bark. people yeah and they would come the dogs would play and i would naturally have to talk to these owners and i like know like all sorts of people now that i could knock on their door if i had an emergency no they would be helpful they would help me and that is such a a great feeling like you just mm -hmm. feel so much more comfortable knowing that like i could run down the street and go to this house this house this house this house and i know those people are wonderful people and yeah. would be able to help me if there was an emergency where i needed someone on the ground yeah you have definitely made like a lot of great friends within your neighborhood i have i don't have that i have like one or two like friendly people um like one of one of my neighbors one time i it was like fourth of july i was locked out of my apartment because alex had gone on a trip and she literally scaled my back fence and <laughs> got over to like open up the like the back door because we had it open for nico Wait, who is this repeat this is my friend jody who like is in my neighbor is in our, our my complex okay i don't this I is when i was working okay um if you you haven't really hung so like usually i do like big um like pool parties during the summer or people just come over to swim because my pool is like right here um christine hasn't 
really explored that with me <laughs> at my place. But everyone knows Jody if you swam at my at my place. Um, but yeah, she like hopped over my fence, got inside, and then like uh, she called me on my. I was on my way home from work, and she's like, "Hey, I'm inside the pl- your apartment. Nico's fine. Um, like, come on in when you can." So we just like hung out all night. It was great. Wait, um, what happened? Why did she scale it? Because Alex locked the door and I didn't have the home key. Okay, you didn't tell this story. I was like, why did she cross your fence? <laughs> why was she in there? I was so I was locked out, and then okay. I um like texted her, being like, I don't know what to do. Like, is the office closed? Like, how do I get into my house? And then she just solved the issue for me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's about I don't have a lot of neighborhood like friends. I do have um my childhood friends and Alex's best friend Dakota and Kirsten. They do live down the street now and that's amazing. Can and they walk there? We have not attempted yet, but we live a mile away from each other. It's okay. like it's like over the freeway and through like the, the mall. <laughs> <laughs> so like not a neighborhood it's like major streets okay okay see driving but quick drive it's like a minute (laughs) um but okay so like tips for making new i thought this was so funny it was notoriously tricky 20 22 percent of americans say they haven't made a new friend in the past five years i just i don't agree i'm like i don't have this issue but okay um, but a lot of people do (laughs) Here's the thing. And I here's what I realized. Okay. So why I make new friends so quickly is because I like get a sense of who they are on social media. Like I, I get obsessed with people and I'm like, oh my gosh, I love your aura. I love your vibe. I love your aesthetic. You seem like a cool person. I like the way you're talking on Instagram stories. We should be friends. So that's like how I make friends. Um, And that's kind of what I did with my current like besties who live near me is Taya, who was just on our, 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 our podcast about Gen Z. She's the Gen Z and my friend Kayla, because I found out, I like already followed them, found out they live near me and Kayla had moved. Actually, I had been following her for a long time, but she had moved into the area during the pandemic. And once like restrictions were lifted, um, started getting my hair done by her because she's a hairstylist. And then I was just calling her up being like, hey, let's go see a movie. Let's go do this. Because she was like one of the first content creator friends outside of like you or Heather who moved into the area that lived near me. And then the same thing happened with Taya. I found out she was moving from Burbank down to OC. And I was like, let's hang out more. And I've been like that friend who was like, I know you're a transplant. You don't really have any other friends here. Like, please like, let me help you. Like, let me, like, let me feel, let me let you feel more comfortable in the area. Like I am here to support you. Um, and I've had such a great support system around me that I'm able to support people who come into the area because there's so many content creators, um, who've just migrated here. And I'm like, mama Tasha being like, how can I help you? (laughs) Yeah. I mean like, so just to rewind back, like the, the instagram like we should be friends when someone says that to me i have like instant guards go up like i don't want <laughs> someone to be like we should be friends i don't like, say I that i just mean an- like i know i know you don't i just don't want anyone to think that that's the way to do it like a natural like oh we should hang out like um get it's, to know it, each other sort of a situation it's is it's much if, smoother ground <laughs> it's if like you follow them on social media and then you see them at an event or somewhere out in the open and you, you, you like have like your first chat with them without it being like force. And then you are like, okay, let's hang out afterwards. You know, let's go yeah. see a movie. Cause like the first yeah. time I hung out with Kayla outside of getting my hair done, I just called her. I was like, Hey, what are you doing right now? She's like, nothing coming home from work. And I'm like, let's go see a movie. And she did. Yeah. I'm, it's such a trigger for me. This has happened to me a couple times where like 
there was this content creator that I was very aware of because she was like in the web of people that I knew. And at one point she messaged me and was like, Oh, we're friends with a lot of same people. We should be friends. And I just immediately felt like, Ugh. like I, that's uncomfortable now. Yeah, and I don't do that. I, <laughs> I felt really weird about it. Like we had, we hung out after that, like in a group setting and it was fine, but like, I never felt comfortable, like just talking to her one-on-one because of that. And then there was another situation where I was friends with someone who was friends with a YouTuber and they were like, Oh, do you want to meet them? Like, I think you guys would be friends. And I was like, so scared because I can't be set up for friendship like I can't do that I can't do a friendship date (laughs) like it has to happen like organically or I will feel weird and forced and extra anxious and like all this pressure because this person's friends with this person like so I actually eventually ended up meeting this person on my own and we are now friends and it was fine but like I couldn't meet them through someone else being like you two should be friends (laughs) (laughs) Um, all right so if we did live in a neighborhood full of friends like not only could we do random shit but like it would be easier especially like going into adulthood with stuff like when you're away, like, you know how you have to come house sit for Heather sometimes and, yeah. like, all this stuff. Like, if we all live near each other, that would be so easy to, like, yes. just pop in each other's houses. And, like, if there was a random mechanic coming because someone was broken and you had to go do something else, like, I could go open the door. You could go open the door. Like, it would be so nice <laughs> to have that sort of a situation like it feels like a utopia to think of living in a neighborhood with your friends like um you could support each other in not just like emotional and like fun ways but like in the ways that you do lean on family when you're all living in the same household you could do that for each other by living in the same neighborhood which just Mm -hmm. Uh, it sounds so wonderful. I keep having like the Taylor Swift song in my head. It's nice to have a friend. A friend. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So I was gonna skip down to this Ella uh, and Helen Peterson Substack quote. Is there anything else you want to touch on before we move down? Um. No. That's okay. All right. Okay. So in Ellen, in Anne Ellen Peterson Subzak, she says, I think a lot of the people whose career paths force them to follow their jobs, often places far away from anyone they've ever known, like if you're in academia or specialized medicine, library science, blah, blah, blah. You get it. You might have moved to states. You might have moved states several times before you've reached your mid thirties. And these are the people who often want and need to move near their friends the most because they're not just far from the people they're, that they love. They're hours and days from anything resembling a support system. And sure, you can make new friends and many have and do, particularly if they have kids in school, but there's something different about the intimacy and reliability of your family, depending on course of your relationship and the friends you've known for so long that they feel like family and I think we've kind of already touched on this but she wrote it very succinctly and nicely here that like there's this level of comfort and reliability when asking for help and support that it's not the same with new friendship that it is with people that like 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 you like you feel like family yeah and like you can truly just be yourself without having to put up walls or um like being uncomfortable with people in in your space because you have you don't have that like sense of familiarity with them yeah and you worry i feel like that they're going to i don't know hold it over you in some way um yeah i don't at least that's one of my things like i don't i don't know I don't want them to feel like I'm taking advantage of them or like stuff like that. Yeah. And like, that's like why I never wanted or needed to leave OC because my support system is all here. 
and um, my life being so rocky and unstable in my early childhood and my teenage years, I like I've had opportunities where I'm like, okay, well, maybe I could move to L.A. But then I'm like, well, exactly what it even though it's like only an hour and a half, the fucking traffic and like the drive just makes it so tough because I would be leaving kind of what I've just, I've built around me over here. And I think like it would take my grandparents passing away or my aunt to move away or like other content creator friends moving back up to LA um, to be like, okay, maybe it's time, you know? Yeah. But right if now. If you ever do, I feel like you should move right here. <laughs> I feel like you should move down here. <laughs> there's an open, there's an open townhouse. They're selling it. <laughs> <laughs> right in here. <laughs> not me. Okay. Katie's like, not me now just learning Orange County wasn't part of LA. Orange <laughs> County and LA are right next to each other, y'all. Um, sometimes it takes me 35 minutes to get up into LA. Sometimes it takes me two and a half hours. You never know. <laughs> Yeah, even like I, like I was saying, like my friend that lives in LA, like Julia, she is like an hour in traffic. Like it's 45 minutes to an hour most of the time if I'm driving to her because uh, she has work normal hours. So I'm driving during the rush this, hour hours. This is why I don't like uh, – no. Like I don't have that issue in Orange County. I, I – I, it doesn't take me that long to drive anywhere in Orange County. And that's why I love it. <laughs> and if I need to get it to LA, I ha- I can I can go. Well, the thing, my sector of LA is not like that. It's like if you have to hop on the highway because yeah. LA is huge. Yeah, um, it's huge. It's huge. LA is a county too, so I'm in like a different town, not like LA center. Um, and it's much nicer over here in terms of like getting around. <laughs> it is. Uh, I have multiple friends who live in multiple areas of LA and Christine is by far the best position for pricing and to get into like central LA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I like, I often think about living like near all of like my YouTube friends back when I lived in New Jersey. And so it was, it was so exciting to come out here with uh cat because i knew that we'd be living together so we could make content together and like you were only an hour away but like it's not again not the same as like living in the same neighborhood but like i used to think about like all the people in london those filmmaker youtubers Mm -hmm. i was just like so envious of the fact that they live near each other and could work together all the time and i just like imagine if all of the booktubers lived on like one block (laughs) that would have been so cool <laughs> it would have been so fun well um, like when you moved down here that's when I felt like Christine was my first friend outside of high school like uh, tr- like we met in 2013 I was only uh like a year out of high school because I graduated summer of 2012 we met summer like 19, of 2013 right? Yeah, I was 19. And then, like, you came out the next year and you moved here. And, like, truly, like, my, like, like that's when everything kind of started was when you moved here. And I started driving in. Like, I drove into L.A. for the first time because of Christine. And, like, I started going into this area because of you. And, um, like, it was... Like, it's so fun to have, like, now, like, you, you're you just, like, you're here all the time, obviously. <laughs> like, you've been a California resident for a very <laughs> long time. But, like, that was so fun. And I never, and, like, I would, had I had dreams of, like, oh, maybe I'll move in with Christine someday. Like, like the way, like, like you and Kat moved in. I'm, like, no, 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 no. We cannot live together. That would not work <laughs> out. <laughs> um, um. Uh, not to switch the topic here, but I was just remembering like the first time I visited you, like I drove because you weren't comfortable driving I and terrified I of driving. Ra- yeah. Yeah. I drove your car, um, or your mom's car. I, I don't know whose car that was. Mom's. Was it your like grandparents car? I can't remember. Your mom's, mom's car. Okay. And I remember it started raining and you didn't know how to use the windshield <laughs> wipers because it never rains. <laughs> And I was like, how do you not know the windshield? <laughs> <laughs> like, rains all the time. Where I'm, like, I'm just like automatically yeah. know 
the windshield wiper. No, do you remember the one time where like I got I got stuck in LA because it was raining so bad, and I couldn't mm-hmm. take the train home because it had stopped. Because we only used to have one car, so I had yeah, to, like, it flooded. And it flooded, and like we were tra- we were going to Chipotle to get lunch, and you're like driving through yep. like a river of water, and you're like pumping your brakes. I was like, "Why are you pumping your brakes?" Yeah. You're like, "So they don't get flooded." I was like, yeah. "Oh, <laughs> oh my god, yeah." I mean, we have a lot of situations when like there's a lot of rain on in Jersey, so I was like pumping the brake up and down. I don't. That's what you do to like clear them out and make sure they don't get flooded. Yeah, and then Tasha's like, "What the hell are you doing?" I just our um our, our chat. A lot of people are talking about uh like they're like too real Natasha. Lol, I'm the same. I just have to say I'm 29 years old and I am a LA driver now. I am absolutely insane. Like <laughs> I'm driving does not scare me anymore. LA driving is another beast. It is. When you come out here, you're all of a sudden like in the jungle. Like you have <laughs> Like it's a whole you're just like ah the whole time you have to be on mm-hmm. um because people do crazy shit all the time no one uses their motherfucking blinkers it is my biggest pet peeve like i'm constantly <laughs> muttering to myself about stupid people not using their stupid blinkers to do stupid anything <laughs> um and there's this thing in LA where i remember when i interned here they like we had um a little um uh, what is it called? Like assembly where they told us all the LA stuff we had to know living here. And they told us about how, when you're at a green light turning left, um, you in LA, the two people that when the light turns red, if you still haven't turned two people will turn left. Like, Mm -hmm. so you have to be waiting for that to happen before you go. If you're on the opposite side. And if you are one of the people at the front of the light and it turns red, you have to go. (laughs) <laughs> Everyone's gonna be fucking pissed because you'll never get to turn left. Yep. You two people turn left. <laughs> that was like it's. I yeah. still hate turning left. Like when there's not a like a left turn signal. Like I just dread it. But I do it now, anyways. Um, but like er, in the early days, that's what that's what terrified me the most. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, Katie's asking if we have any public transportation. It's not good here at all. Mm-hmm. I mean, there is public transportation. It is not good. And it'll take you like double the length to get anywhere if you That's why everyone has cars. Public transportation. <laughs> but also like That's we have cars car. because California is huge. Okay. Like we're not Big. like, yeah. like we're not New York on a very small sliver of land. Like we are massive. Like LA County is It's massive. very spread out. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, all right. Before we move into the end of the episode here, I wanted to touch on this idea. Um, let's see. Okay. I wanted to touch on, okay, the average adult only lives 18 miles from their parents because of the child care community aspects of raising a child. Mm-hmm. And then people like Natasha, whose parents have passed, or me, whose like, parents are across the country, like... It, it it really changes your mindset when you think about like having offspring because I was raised in uh like 10 minutes away from my nana and papa. They were over all the time helping my mm-hmm. mom. Like they were babysitting us all the time. I had like a second set of parents mm-hmm. and I, since getting Bellamy, it's really made me think about the fact that like, I don't think I would want to have a kid without having like a solid community around me yep. to like, Unless I had, like, a really solid partner. But even so, if, like, we both had careers, mm-hmm. it'd be you'd have to pay for child care, and it's so expensive. Yep. Um, yeah. Like, do you think about how, like, like, you mean you have family around you, and you have kind of, like, a community around your nephew. Yeah. It's, it's but I just feel like there's no way. Like, even though I, I do have, like, fa- like, my aunt is just wants to move to Mexico. <laughs> By the time I have kids, she ain't going to be here. <laughs> and, that just sounds so funny. It sounds like she's know. trying to escape the country. <laughs> no, she wants to live on a beach for the rest of her life. I'm like, good. I'm glad. Do you, girl. Um, but, like, I, I think the only way it could work is, like, like, if we had, like, I think if you and Heather 
both move down here. Get your butts down to OC where it's easier to take care of children. Um, or like my partner's parents, like, like, but then it's only one pair of grandparents. Like even my, my, um, like you're still going to have to pay for childcare though. Like you can't always like rely on, on your parents, but, um, like yeah. even, even my best friend, Abby, she's got two, uh, sets of, of parents and she still pays for childcare. So it's, it, it just sounds very overwhelming. But- And like, if you don't have parents like I do, or you don't have, um, you know, your parents aren't, aren't close to you. Like it just, it doesn't sound doable. No, it's so much. It's like, and just having my dog who's so needy, like I just, I can't imagine having a child and not having that support system. Like when I had, when Bellamy was a puppy, all I wanted was to be able to drop him at my mom's house for a couple hours or Olivia's house or like anyone's house next to me. Mm -hmm. And like, I didn't have anything like that. And until I could drop him at daycare, even there's, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's for a dog, like a human baby. (laughs) Like my parents really lucked out because my Nana and Papa were literally, they'd come over whenever and like, we'd have the best time with them. Like we had the occasional babysitter, but like most of the time it was them. And we just, they would drop us off at their house where they'd come over and it was so easy. And we had a great time. Yeah. My, my mom had, well, my, her parents were working at the time and then uh, my dad's parents weren't really involved. But um, she had my aunt and her best friend, and they are seven years younger than her. So, like, when she had us at 30, they were 23 and just, like, out of college and, like, lived near. So, like, my aunt and, like, her best friend and my god sister were always over, like, helping to take care of us. And oh. I think, like, the only thing, like, that would work is if, if my cousins, Miley and Sailor, like, moved back down to california and then like we all just helped each other yeah and i have alex yeah but he's a yeah a boy I mean, <laughs> yeah eventually like we should really try to make this happen i feel like where we live you need really to move to down here that's the conclusion <laughs> <laughs> but like i do really love my community here though it's so nice and so close to everything <laughs> okay i'm just gonna put this out here i have been to la and gone to more events living in orange county than christine has since she moved there <laughs> well listen i have had this dog <laughs> Who has kept me chained to the house for three years? Um, like I'm, I'm at the point where I like might take a drastic training measure. <laughs> Listen, so, if I you move down here, but like if you, I'm just cut you off. Sorry. No, go ahead. But like if, like imagine if you have moved down here three years ago, or when did you move? Twenty twenty one. Two years ago? 2020, 2020 is when I moved in with John. And then 2021, yeah. Honestly, I couldn't find a place. Like, they were so scarce and they disappeared so fast. Or else I would have tried harder. Um, like, this place was miraculous. Like, like your it place is up, beautiful. And I love this place, yeah. Uh, it's very similar to mine in the setup, but just, like, a little bit bigger. Um, but, yeah, like, if you had moved down here, I don't think you would have been dealing with everything that you are dealing with now but you also wouldn't have met your friends who are around you now like yeah you would have had like me and alex and all of my family and like you know all of my friends down here too yeah yeah i mean like it's it's a that's like a big what if situation um and yeah i mean like i'm really thankful for the community i have right now like there's like like i have now like Friend, it's weird to call them friends, but I, yeah, like friends spanning lots of different ages and generations in this neighborhood. <laughs> and it's like, it's so weird to think about. Like, I like a lady that's like my mom's age and like a lady that's like my grandma's age and a lady that's like, this, like you know, like all over the place. <laughs> that like I just like chat with on the walks. So it's really nice um, to like, it's, it's like that sort of con situation where like, it's nice to know that like I did this myself and I like made all these new friends and like I have formed a community like i flew by myself (laughs) um but yeah so like we'll leave on this conclusion here like what would have to happen what would have to change 
for you to move closer to the people who nourish you and support you and make your life better and easier in different ways. Um, and yeah, I think like moving forward, it'll all, it'll kind of hinge on like if we find partners and like mm-hmm. the, everything has to, the stars have to align for like everyone in a friend group to be ready to like move at the same time and like their yeah. partners to be okay with moving to the same place. But like there's hope. I think there's mad hope for future. I think so too. I, I even now, like I just had a conversation with Heather because like they're family planning and she's like, I don't want to live out here. Like I want to be close to you. Like they're, they're even thinking about moving closer. And I just, my friend is an escrow in a house. That's only 15 minutes away from me now. Like I think it's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, I but, like, I want to find my partner so I can like get a house. I don't want to get a house on my own. I don't know if I could afford one in this place. It's so fucking expensive down here. But also like mm-hmm. it feels so permanent and I don't want to like put down roots unless I know I'm ready to. Yeah. And like like when I finally do open up the abs, like I think what I'm going to do is because I don't love all the men in orange – Orange County because the political oh, uh, climate okay. climate is very different down here than it is like in LA. Like I'm going to move like I'm going to have like the distance up in LA too so that I can weed out my choices. So who knows? <laughs> but I'm definitely All never right. moving out of LA. I mean, California. Out of California. Um, see, like, I don't know. I, I can't say never say never because my whole family is on the other coast. But, yeah. like, I do really love it here. That's like. All we, right. We, I, I just want to touch on. Um, there was another part yeah. we kind of, like, skipped past. But, um, like, I just have the sense, like, Christine will someday might move back to Jersey because people have kids. People get, you know, ill. You might have to go help who knows you like might want to be closer over there. And I, we were watching, she had me watch the carpool karaoke, the last one that James Corden did with Adele. And it like, I just like brought me to tears because like Adele started crying being like, you were always there for me. Like you're the one um, who got like me through like to James, she was saying um, like the divorce and, and and now you're going to be moving back to the UK and I'm just not ready to go back yet. And, um, that like just got me thinking about Christine. (laughs) Yeah. No, I was, I was crying all throughout that. (laughs) I know. It was just like so emotional. It was very emotional and like very relatable. Um, because their friendship was like so sweet. Mm -hmm. I didn't, we had had no no idea idea. that they were friends. Yeah. But like it was like a very vulnerable interview for James Corden. You never see that sort of detail. And for Adele, because she's always kind of deflecting with humor. Mm -hmm. And it was very touching. Mm -hmm. All right. On that note, we're going to we're going to link the articles we're talking about in the show notes if you want to check them out. And we're going to move on into FMK. Okay, it's Star Wars week. Happy May the 4th. Uh, This comes out on May the 6th. (laughs) Okay, so we've got the droids. We got BB-8, R2-D2, and (laughs) C-3PO. Oh my god. I was gonna put um, like other characters, but like Christine doesn't watch all the Star Wars content. I'm like, she's not gonna have an opinion on this. <laughs> I am going to kill R two D two. I find him annoying. <laughs> going to. So cute. I'll probably um kiss C three PO because he's funny even though he says annoying things. And I will marry BB-8 because I find BB-8 to be really cute and sweet. Yes. It's unfortunate that the BB-8 is supposed to be a male because I feel like BB-8 is a, is a girl. I know. I was like, BB-8's a girl too. Yeah, that's in my head. That's... Why do they call it he, even though it's a robot? I know. Like, make it a she. All the other ones are he's. Yeah. 
it's frustrating um <clears throat> can you do like can you do an impression of r2d2 or c3po beep beep boop, boop, beep boop, 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 boop. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> is c3po he like talks but i don't know what he, he goes says. like thank the maker <laughs> <laughs> Sir, uh, does he say sir sometimes? Yes. <laughs> he is very yeah. Polite. What is your impression of R two D two? R two D two does his little scream, so he goes like, <laughs> "Oh my god!" That's when he's like, like falling across like the starship because it's moving. Thank you, Gabby. <laughs> she said it was perfect. See, I don't know any of these enough to be like, "That's perfect. That's bad." Like, I don't know anything. <laughs> you mean you don't want that in the bedroom <laughs> okay i wait am, what are you gonna do yeah i am going to hmm i'm gonna marry c3po because that sound because he at least he can talk like i don't i don't know droid speak you know and um um he's very helpful and um I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little kiss to BB eight and I'm I'm gonna cliff Mr. R two D two. Uh because he he's cute and all, but meh doesn't do a lot. He's he's a little feisty. I think it'd be funny. He'd probably do the scream as he falls off the cliff. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> all right. Moving on to chapter Wait, who chat. Did you marry? That just went in one ear and out the other. I married C three PO. Okay, all right. Let's move on to chapter. Finally. Chat. <laughs> So wow. if you don't know, we have been rereading Akatar very slowly for uh, two chapters, an episode, one chapter, an episode, time, sometimes, and we are up to chapter 34 and chapter 35. It's A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass, if you don't know the shortened version, Akatar there. We read Natasha, these chapters what happened? two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. I can't I summarize the we first. We kept having to push the segment. I know. I can't summarize the first one because I did. I just reread 35. So I can summarize 35 if you okay. can summarize 35. Okay, I'll do 34. <laughs> All right. So, <sighs> okay. We are brought to the throne room, I think. Feyre is we. <laughs> and mm-hmm. Aramantha is a redhead, which I did not remember at all. Really? And she's got a crown. Well, yeah. Is you did you remember? Are you saying you yeah? Didn't know? I've always known she was a redhead. No, I pictured her as I guess like I don't know, real really dark hair. I don't know why, because dark um, hair is evil. No, I just <laughs> always pictured her with like a dark hair. I don't know. I pictured her looking like um the Snow White Witch. Actually, that's what I pictured her looking like. Um, anyway, because. Of the way I think that she's immortal. She wants to be immortal. I don't know. I don't know. That's just what's in my head. The Snow White Witch. Anyway, she's a redhead. She has Claire Better, who is the young woman who Feyre said she was to Rysand when he asked. Um, She has her body twisted up and tortured hanging on the wall above her so that Feyre can see. Yeah, it's disgusting. And Feyre says she's come to claim the one she loved, Tamlin. She loves Tamlin. Tamlin, Tamlin still has his mask on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Tamlin's like, I don't even know her. I don't know what she's talking about. She's lying. And Amrath is like, no, you're lying. <laughs> and you definitely love her. And she has Jurian's eyeball. So Jurian is the human who fell in love with Aramantha's sister and betrayed her sister because they were at war with the humans. And Jurian used his relationship with Aramantha's sister to gain knowledge about the other side. And so Aramantha 
uh, Durian murdered. I think they murdered her sister. And then Aramantha. Yeah, Durian t- tortured and murdered Amarantha's sister. Yeah, even though he was supposedly in love with her and she was mm-hmm. in love with him. And so now Aramantha has Durian's eyeball in a crystal ring that keeps his soul alive in conjunction with this finger bone that she wears around her neck of his. Mm-hmm. And so he could see everything going on with his like eyeball inside her ring, which is really weird and creepy. Yeah. And she says that if Feyre can complete three tasks, then she can have whatever she wants. And so there's like this setup that she can have Tamlin um, and release all of the Tamlin's court members if Feyre can complete these three tasks. We have no idea what the t- three tasks are going to be. And or she says, or if you can uh, solve this riddle for me right now, you can go immediately. And each task will come. And she's stretching out the task so much because they'll come once a month at the full moon. I was like, yeah. really? <laughs> Uh, that's, that's a long time. So long to wait. So she gives her this riddle. I didn't write down the riddle. I didn't I, either. I thought you would. I I just <laughs> thought it was annoying. Like the riddle, well, the riddle does, me off. The riddle doesn't come until chapter thirty five. Oh, we haven't gotten it yet. Maybe that's no. why I didn't write it down. Okay. Yeah. Um. So anyway, um. Then they beat up Feyre. I forget why. I think she says something. So here's the thing. She Alice says to make no deals. And here comes Feyre into oh, yeah. Under the Mountain and then Making makes deals. a big old deal. And she's like, she's like trying to be like, and this, and then this, and like trying to make sure like there's nothing in it. <laughs> and what she forgot to be is like, say is like, and make sure I'm not harmed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to be murdered. Like, she's not thinking this all the way through. I just want to note Katie saying in the chat, I can't think of anything more embarrassing than announcing your love for Tamlin. Uh. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway, yeah, she Alice did say unless your life depends on it, but Farah is, I guess, under a lot of pressure. She's not thinking this through. She needs a lawyer there to, like, make note of something she wants included on this deal contract yeah because there's like no one there who's really gonna help her she just is coming in so helpless yeah yeah <laughs> I don't what she was a even human <laughs> just got a knife at a gunfight <laughs> um yeah so if she so she she keeps asking she's like okay well what happens if like, I don't make it through one of the tasks. And Amarantha's like, well, there won't be much of you left. And then... Um, like, then that's it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And um, she's like, well, if Amarantha... If she doesn't accept Amarantha's deal, then she's gonna, just going to kill her. So I guess you're right. This is like a life or death situation. Um, and so, we, yeah. And then immediately what happens is that she gets beat up. Tamlin's eyes say no, but she accepts and gets beaten to death. So that's wonderful. Like he, like the, the, both of these death, chapters, he's just like, bad. she's just like trying to get like something out of him. Like the whole time, like, like, does he, does he truly love me? Like what's happening here? Like, does I don't he know what love me. Yeah. I, I, like, I just feel so bad for her. There's cause he's sitting on a throne. He's sitting on a throne next to Aramantha too. We didn't really set that up, but like, oh, that's he, right. She wants him to be her cohort. Yes, uh, yeah. he basically was her first choice for sex slave, and then Rysand was the backup dancer, and he came and became her. So was she having sex, sex with him this whole time? That's what it sounds like. He was her like quote whore. Everyone said. No, not 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 Rice, not Rysand, like Tamlin. Yeah. Oh, I don't think Tamlin is because I think Rysand has already filled that position. Mm-hmm. But like, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I just can't see Tamlin doing it. I could see him like getting everyone hurt because he doesn't want to sacrifice anything. Yeah. <clears throat> 
morals. You know, like he won't bend. Whereas Rysand is bending to protect everyone he rules over. Like, and he'll, he's willing to sacrifice his well being for all of them. Mm-hmm. Like, Tamlin is not thinking in those ways. He's thinking, like, I will never bend to you, even if it means the destruction of everyone and everything I love. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, I'm pulling up chapter 35 so I can read off. 35. Open. Okay, so chapter 35. Oh, the the riddle. She wakes up. Uh, her nose is broken. Her face is swollen. She feels like shit. Um, she's thrown into a mm-hmm. um uh la, 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 like a dungeon type of thing. And there's like mold she smells and mm-hmm. um like she was like, Well, I guess I should have probably asked what well, my living given situation. Moldy food. Yeah, like yeah. just water and she's bread. Given moldy food. And so immediately and there's mold on it. Lucian um Lucian enters the cell and says <laughs> that she shouldn't be there. I'm <laughs> just like, yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And Lucian gave her okay, I wrote this down. Aramantha actually gave some of Lucian's power back to coax Tamlin into being his whore. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So Lucian has some of his power back because of a deal to for, with Tamlin. So I guess Tamlin did bend for Lucian. And so uh, Lucian fixes her nose and with magic and she faints and she comes back and like Lucian, like we find out a little bit more about Amarantha through, through Lucian. He's like, Oh, you guess you know everything now. Yeah. Cause obviously they kept it from her cause they couldn't tell her. Um, yeah, so we 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 find out that Amaranth and Jurian fought in the battlefield and used their armies as shields, but she finally got to him, tortured him for months, and ignored the king of Highburn, and they lost the war. That and that's the reason why they lost the war, um, is because she was so dead set on torturing Jurian. Took his eye and the finger bo- burn bone, um, and then Favor gets pulled. Uh, to the throne room again and um, gets questioned about what her name is. Rice stand out too. Yes. So like Amaranth is like, well, <laughs> yeah, I was up all last night and I was thinking about how I don't know your name. Like, what's your name? She doesn't give it to him. And then she's like, we sand. <laughs> he like comes out and then he starts getting questioned about like, He's like, is this is this the girl that you saw a couple months ago? And he's like, mm, all and humans he goes, look the same. All humans look the same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what's her name? She demanded every sand. He goes, how would I know? She lied to me. <laughs> Not the fact that he could like pull things out of her mind. Um, like, uh, okay. Yeah, so and then, then like. When she doesn't budge, yeah. Yeah, when she doesn't budge, they pull Lucian out again. Poor Lucian. uh, With his brothers behind him. And she's like, okay, Rhysand. They threaten Rhysand. Pain. Yeah. (laughs) It's just like Bella (laughs) with with Jane and and Edward. And she's like, wait, my name is Feyre. She did, and they, and she didn't <laughs> ask. Amarantha did not ask for her last name, which I thought was interesting. So then we do got you her name. Know her last name. What is her last name? Feyre of Human Town. Feyre Archeron. Archeron. Oh yeah. <laughs> so we got her name, and now it's time for the riddle. So I'm wondering. I'm like. I'm like. Wait. Because she's gonna tell her the riddle. Does she have to answer it at that moment, or can she answer it whenever she wants to answer it? Because I'm like, can't someone help her at that point? I feel like it's whenever she wants to answer it, but I don't. We don't get really a line like of technicalities. <laughs> no. So she goes, solve this riddle, Feyre, and you and your high lord and all his court may immediately leave with my blessing. Let's see if you are indeed clever enough to deserve one of our kind. So the riddle is, there are those who seek me a lifetime, but never we meet. And those I kiss, 
but who trample me beneath ungrateful feet. At times I seem to favor the clever and the fair, but I bless all those who are brave enough to dare. By large, my ministrations are soft-handed and sweet, but scorned I become a difficult beast to defeat. For though each of my strikes lands a powerful blow, when I kill, I do it slow. I don't understand riddles, so I was like, I'm dumb. I'm a dumb human. I don't know this. I just, I feel like this riddle is very wordy. So it takes, it will take a lot of like, I'd have to write it down and like pull out each line to figure out. Like, I like doing riddles. And like when there's this riddle in uh, Goblet of Fire with the spider and I remember like stopping and doing that riddle with Harry um and figuring it out with him but like this riddle I was just like fuck this it's too much work it's too long (laughs) and um and it it feels like it's probably metaphorical I don't remember what the answer is but I think like I do think that she gets it by the end because I don't think we do all all three Mm -mm. of the tasks um but she do you does. think everyone okay. in that yeah. room like uh, knows the answer? No. I think Aramantha knows the answer. And that's it. Like I I don't think everyone like instantly knows riddles cuz they're a fae. <laughs> like she asks about, she acts like fae are so much cleverer than humans, but they're the same sort of mm-hmm. they're just like humans. They just like have powers and heightened abilities. <laughs> Um, you can see clearer. Like I think they have a heightened. They have a blown out sense of self. <laughs> like the Fey think they're so much smarter and so much clever, and they're just like people. <laughs> I wish it had been a riddle about the surreal or something, so she could have been like, "Oh yeah, I have experience with that." Yeah, it. I, it feels like it's something obscure. I don't remember. Don't tell us because um, I kind of want to try to figure it out as we get closer. Yeah. But yeah. yeah so then that's, that's she's it for the chapter, yep. right? Well, she's thrown back in her cell and then it ends being like, it's your first task. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we've got I'm looking forward to the tasks, even though I remember feeling let down as I read them. I just remember like <laughs> feeling like we were going to the Goblet of Fire and mm-hmm. then being like, oh, this is nothing like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is depressing. Uh, I really but, this is like the first time where I was like, I really just want to keep reading. I. I just remember feeling sad. This is like another th- reason why I think this book wasn't my favorite. It was like always you're getting stepped on and never you're standing up to the people around you. Like it was a constant slap in the face and you never get like the arc of becoming powerful enough to be the person that doesn't get stepped on until the next book. The next book is her... It's her montage. <laughs> it's her growth arc. <laughs> yeah. um, it's really stretching out like the typical character arc into two books. Um, like you typically would see, I feel like the hero character kind of rise by the end of the novel, but I really don't feel like Feyre does. I feel like she's finally finding herself because she's been so stepped on her entire life. Mm-hmm. Um. And she doesn't really get to a point where you feel like, yeah, Feyre did it. Doesn't she die at the end? Like, <laughs> yeah, pretty get much. To bring her back to life. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, back to life. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Katie says, yeah, it would have been nice for her to gain some agency before she came, became Faye. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, folks, we are gonna we are about to go record Fangirl Tea Time. Today we're going to be discussing some of our less ideal living situation stories. Some um trauma. not so great <laughs> roommate or living situations from the past and um how we dealt with that. So that should be a time that is of course available at the team jacob leveling up on our patreon patreon.com slash those working fangirls i want to say thank you so much for joining today our show is edited by alex polis and jake needham and 
The music is by Cole Jenkins with vocals by Heather Traska. We are on all sorts of socials, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. If you can follow us on those with links in our show notes, we'd really appreciate you following us on one of those so that you know when we are putting out new stuff and so we can Mm -hmm. interact with you in the comments on Instagram in particular. Really fun. So, uh, yeah, we... We are those forking fangirls and we make videos, not videos. We post new episodes every <laughs> Friday. We will see you next week. Bye, y'all. Bye, I'm Christine. Guys. I'm Natasha. <laughs> see Bye. you next week. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>